Couldn't get much cuter than that, could it? Uh, no. Will you all pray with me, please? Mothering God, would you come alongside each one of us and uh, uh, take us up in your loving arms and hold us and, and make it safe for us to, to be here and to open our hearts to you and the life you would, would bless us with, the love you would give to us, the spirit you would fill us with, uh, all the ways that you feed us. Bless the words of my mouth and the words of meditation in our hearts and these words of Scripture that we've read, and take them and make them your living, loving, life-giving word. We pray in the name of Jesus, the word who became flesh for us. Amen. So early in my 24-year career as a Navy chaplain, I remember being helicoptered out to an aircraft carrier for three days of intensive ministry. There had been an accident on board and additional chaplains and medical personnel were needed. You might not realize the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous workplaces in the world. When it was time to go back to shore, a helicopter was to come and take us back to the base. We were told to be in a stairwell right below the flight deck at 0900, 9 o'clock for anybody who doesn't know, uh, ready to go topside and be able to board that helo literally in seconds. So the helicopter would land and take off immediately without shutting down because the command didn't want to disrupt flight ops for the jets. We were in the stairwell at 0850. If you're not 10 minutes early in the Navy, uh, or any branch of the military for that matter, then you're late. The helicopter did not arrive at 0900 as scheduled. It had not arrived by 0915 or 0930. Indeed, we waited in that stairwell for almost two hours before the chopper arrived. And we could not leave the stairwell during that time as the chopper could have arrived at any moment and we had to be ready. The smells in a stairwell below the flight deck of an aircraft carrier are not exactly pleasant, okay? Uh, the noise level right below the flight deck is pretty high. It was summer in the Pacific, and the temperatures in that stairwell were pretty high and only got higher as the morning wore on. And we couldn't take off any of our gear because we had to be ready to go. We were thirsty and getting hungry. It had been a long time since 0500 when we had had chow. Uh, it was miserable. And it was not an uncommon experience in my 24 years of being in the Navy, as well as the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Merchant Marine, who all get their chaplains from the Navy, and I served all of them, uh, as well as a joint operation with the Army in Afghanistan. Hurry up and wait. Be ready to go. And wait. It's not just part of the military. You know, it, it's part of life, isn't it? It reminds me of being a child and all the times that my poor mother was trying to teach me and, and my siblings to be patient. As a child, it just felt like, you know, hurry up and wait. We were ready to go, and we had to wait. Have you been there? Part of life at every age, isn't it? It's part of the spiritual life and the journey of faith. As we heard in the story of the Ascension from the book of Acts, Jesus told followers, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go 
into all the world and proclaim the, the good news the risen Christ said in the longer ending of Mark's gospel. Oh, but wait. <laughs> wait until you are clothed with power from on high, Jesus said. Wait until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Go, but wait. Isn't that frustrating? And by the way, Jesus is calling his followers to branch out again, as we've been reading from the Gospel of John in chapter 15, the last two Sundays, when Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Here in Acts, he's calling them and calling us to expand ministry and go into places we've never been before, even if it takes us beyond our comfort zone. To be the crucified and risen one's witnesses in Jerusalem is one thing. That's a familiar place to the disciples. And then in all Judea, well, at least that's still one's own nation and one's own people. But Samaria? Really? Now, the Samaritans were the ancient enemies of the Jews, and all of the first Christians were Jewish. So, you know, come on, Jesus, there, there's no such thing as a good Samaritan, which is why Jesus had to tell a parable about a good Samaritan. Really, Jesus, that's where you want us to go? And, and then to the ends of the earth, that means going to the Gentiles, people who are unclean, it says in Scripture, an abomination, it says in Scripture, not to be associated with according to, you know, people's understanding of God's law, because if you do that, you will be made unclean as well. Jesus is saying, risk it. Jesus is saying, get over it. You will be clothed with power from on high to go and to do this. There's a new law, a new commandment I give you that you love one another just as I have loved you. Well, some of us have gotten over it, you know. Some of us are ready to risk it and, and willing to go. We, we want to do this loving thing. And Jesus says, go, uh, oh, but wait. <laughs> you know, to those of us who are action-oriented and, and want to get some things done and, and are ready to go, at least we think we are ready to go, Jesus says, wait. Don't leave yet. Jesus told the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. It's an opportunity to bear some of the fruit we've been reading about in the Gospel of John and talking about these last few Sundays. The fruit of the Spirit is love, St. Paul writes in Galatians 5, and joy, peace, oh, there it is, patience. Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In what turned out to be the, the ten days of waiting between the ascension of Jesus and, and Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, Luke reports in Acts, in a section that we did not read, that the disciples returned to Jerusalem and constantly devoted themselves to prayer. So it wasn't like they were doing nothing while they were waiting. They were praying. Praying about the ways that they thought they were ready to go, but they weren't really ready, at least not according to God's plan. You need to wait. You need to pray. And here's the thing. You know, even if we agree or are at least willing to allow for the possibility that, that maybe we're not ready according to God's plan, and, and we need to pray, 
Most of us, myself included, can't pray constantly for 10 minutes, let alone for 10 days. Can we wait and keep praying however long it goes until God says it's time? You know, that may be an indication of how it is that we are not ready. And we need to wait. And how often is our prayer about our agenda rather than God's? Which is more like, you know, God, will you bless my mess? (laughs) Rather than, God, how can I become part of your plan? How can I become part of of whatever you're up to, God, rather than trying to get you to be part of what I want? Maybe that's an indication of of how it is that that we're not ready, (laughs) and we need to wait. In our gospel reading this morning from John, we see Jesus at prayer in the garden before his arrest and crucifixion. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke's depiction of that scene, Jesus prays, not my will, but thy will be done. And here in John, it says Jesus is praying for his followers, for you and for me. And what does Jesus pray for us? That they may be one. Why does Jesus have to pray that we may be one? Because so often we are not. Which is maybe another indication of how it is that we are not ready and we need to wait. What does it mean for us to be one? Let's make an important distinction between uh, unity and uniformity. Being one does not mean that we all think alike or that we will always all agree about everything. Our unity is not in agreeing, you know, what color to paint the church (laughs) or who to vote for for president. Our unity is not in agreeing on any social issue or even who to call as your next pastor. I don't know if you caught that in that reading from from Acts. How did they call someone to fill the place that was left by Judas? They cast lots, it says. It means they rolled dice or they they drew straws. Are you up for that, for for calling your next pastor? Probably not, okay, you know. It doesn't matter if we agree or disagree about anything. That's not where our unity is in what we do or we don't do. It's about what God has done in Jesus Christ. Dying and rising again to show us how much we are loved. The love of God in Christ Jesus unites us and makes us one. Our unity, as we read in 1 John, is in Christ and in the divine love shown to us and given to us in Christ. As we've also been reading from 1 John since Easter, and we read a couple of weeks ago, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God And there is our unity. A recent study by the Pew Research Center found that religiously unaffiliated Americans are far less likely than those who identify with a religious faith to feel close to other people in the United States. 51% versus 73%. And even to feel close to those in their local communities, 43% versus 60%. They don't even bother to poll for feeling close to the rest of the world. You can only imagine. 
in the world, in our nation, and even in our local communities. There's no unity, no love that binds us together. We are seeing the consequences of that in our world and in our nation and in our local communities, are we not? And we are called to be witnesses. We heard the risen Christ declare before ascending into heaven. And one of the things we are to witness to is that unity is not about agreeing or disagreeing about anything. As Christians, we are called to witness to a unity that is greater than any agreement or disagreement. Unity is about divine love that binds us together with cords that cannot be broken. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to go out into the world with that love, the fruit of the Spirit. And if we go with any agenda other than love and unity, we need to wait. We're not ready. We need to pray, come Holy Spirit, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Spirit. So every time that we're raring to go, we may need to check ourselves. Am I clothed with power from on high? And when we are, you know, then and only then do we go. Otherwise, it's hurry up and wait. Abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you, because apart from me and my love, you can't do anything. <laughs>